Twitter and Facebook. So going back to our original chart about lifers and CV entry and temp job, you know, for, for Sean, um, he is making a career uh, through, through social media um, and music in particular, using social media to do that. Bizarrely enough, when you look at his Twitter account, um, he has three, three and a half thousand followers. But they are all people um, who are related to helping his business. They are, they are fans rather than the team follow back hashtag or the, you know, grow your, grow your followers here. They are all real connections. Um, very, very different guy, DC Cardwell. Um, we, go, we go from uh, tex, uh, Texas down to Melbourne, Australia. Um, DC Cardwell um, is a very interesting character. Um, he thought that music had passed him by. Um, he's had a family, he's had jobs, um, got to the stage of life where he thought, well, that's, that's it, you know. Um, there's, there's some great footage of him playing guitar on um, Irish TV, I, I, I found, when he was a youngster. And I thought, oh, he, he's very good. And you think, yeah, but I, I know the story between then and there and what he's done, and it hasn't worked out. DC um, would, would claim, any, anyone want to guess what was his big break with social media, what, what, what network he used? This might surprise you. MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> Totally, totally. MySpace. We, we, all, we all knock MySpace, and quite rightly so, but, but actually MySpace back in the day when there wasn't anything else was incredibly powerful. Um, DC, in, in his own quirky way, wrote a song that went um, viral. Um, he couldn't work out who this Tom Anderson, um, Tom Anderson who founded MySpace, uh, was. Why is this guy one of my friends? I, I can't work out. I don't know who this guy is. Worked out and wrote a song called Tom is Everybody's Friend. Um, which you're going, oh my goodness, that's, that's so, oh, I, my artistic integrity is being challenged here. But he wrote that and made some amazing friends that he could take from MySpace when that became a, a no-go area onto other, other platforms as well. And I love this. Um, he's, he's actually, I, I asked him to write a few words. He's written a blog about his experience, um, which I'll give you the, the address to as well. Since MySpace, he says, I haven't been one of those lucky enough to, in, to make large amounts of money from my music, but I've released this, my first album, Some Hope, recorded songs in Los Angeles for a film, won a song contest, played a fair number of live, live shows in my own city of Melbourne, and above all, developed a faithful far, far flung following of fans from all over the world. So going back to what, what is the measure of your success? What is the measure? For, for DC, this is very much his, his measure of success. Um, one of the things we'll come on, come on to in a bit is some hope um, he gave away free for a period of time. And that had a huge impact on these far-flung fans in particular. Um, one of the things he did, I know quite a few of you from memory are involved in video in the room. Um, he got a stunning video for uh, one of his songs, um, which I never remember the title to, so I'm not going to try to it. But it, this is the thing that won him the, uh, the, the, the prize, and he was able to, to pull his fans together uh, to encourage them to, to go for that. This, this, these are guys you might have heard, though. Um, Civil Wars, anybody? Any takers? A few of us. A few of us, yeah. Um, Civil Wars, I'm, I discovered via social media. Um, so it only seems fitting to, to bring them into this. Um, 2008, so they've only been around five years. Um, these guys at the moment have had a huge spat. They're not talking to each other. Something's happened. Um, they are not in conversation to each other at all, which is even more startling because when I go through, you'll see, you'll see why. So 2009, um, they, they launched a live album, um, and it was completely free. Um, Noise Trade uh, is still in the top 40. 100,000 downloads. Um, it was something of theirs. They said, well, actually, we can give this away. We can create a fan base um, through, through Noise Trade. Um, Barton Hollow, uh, the follow-up to that was released. Title tracked, offered as a free download. So still thinking about this, what, what can we give away? How, how, can, how can we get people engaged in what we're doing? Um, they went on, uh, I think they were on uh, later with Jules Holland um, a year or two ago. Superb reviews. Um, ended up touring with Adele. Uh, 
you might have missed this because I, I was, I was um, away at the time and came back and thought, wow, one tweet from Adele. Please go out and get the new Civil Wars album. They're my absolute favourite and the new record is beautiful. Anyone guess what the effect was of that, if you know the story? Um, UK, number two album of the week in the download chart, US number one. One tweet. So while, I, while, I, while I've knocked people like Adele for, you know, millions of Twitter followers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the old... Go on. I just wanted to ask, where would you put Adele in your little pyramid that you flipped upside down? She, she's, an, she's definitely... Um, she's not people like me. She's definitely an influencer, which would be right down the bottom now. So I wouldn't... I wouldn't um, you know, the, the worst thing you can do now is go, get, go and get Adele to, to tweet your album and play her. The, the um, thing that used to happen was Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry is, you know, got millions of followers on, on Twitter. Everyone would play him with, here's my new product, to here's my charity, to here's this, that, and the other. And you need, need to have a strategy. The fact, the fact there's a relationship between the Civil Wars and Adele obviously helped. If you have a relationship with Adele, or someone else who has, has lots of Twitter followers, don't spam them with a request, you know, download my, download my album or get people to download my album. Um, actually, that, that comes with weight and gravitas because she knows, she knows them. They, they have a relationship with her. You know. Does that help? No. I was just wondering in that pyramid, I'm, I'm just, yeah. where would you put Adele? Where you would put her at the bottom? To, to, yeah, I, I, I would traditionally put her at the, 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 the bottom. Yeah. But actually, if you think, think of what, what, what's happened with these guys, the Civil Wars, they've been on tour. They're a friend. Yeah. So it's a very different relationship than the you I would have with Adele, maybe. Um, well, definitely me. I wouldn't, wouldn't have that. So, um, Joy Williams from um, Civil Wars uh, is very articulate in... in in saying what their social media strategy is. It says, while the, the vastness of what's available on the internet adds to a lot of noise, it also makes um, it possible to connect with people like never before. I just want to un underline that word, connect. Yeah, I think that's really key. The other thing she says, as a band, we've tried to utilise that. We don't want to be in ivory towers. We enjoy interaction with fans. Word of mouth avenues like social media have been a huge part of our our musical story. Totally. And for the Civil Wars, although they're not talking to each other, actually they want to talk to fans on social, social media. And that, that's, that's take, take that back a step, just this quick, quick line in there, you know, they're not talking to each other, haven't been for a while, yet they've got the number one album in the US, number two uh, in the UK. That's, I think that's quite staggering, but, but there we go. DC comes in um, with, a, with a, I think it's a stellar quote, and um, this, is, this is my challenge um, to you in particular. That's my quote at the top, social is social. It's not, it's not broadcast, it's not shouting, it's not, ah, it's social. Social networking is a reflection on life, so there's no set way to make things to work for you or me. Go back to our runaround. So actually don't look at what other people are doing. If it's, not if it's not an organic, dynamic process, it's probably doomed to failure. And I know that some artists will never get it, will never be able to sit at the computer or stare at their smartphone and see it as a portal to real, living, breathing people. And that, that for me, was quite poetic and captured his success in particular. So my question is, so let's say a person is, is an introvert. All the person that likes to have a personality that is quite mystique, you know, yeah. quite obscure. So what about those people? I mean, now, you cannot say that they don't have the, the chance to talk with their fans. Yeah. They choose not to. What, what happens with them is, is, is going to be a backlash with, with, with people, like they might call them that they don't care about their fans or something. What is your experience? Quite, quite, quite possibly. I think, I think you need to work out about your, your it, I suppose, your, your personality, and how, how that is then for reflected. Um, within, within social media. Um, 
it does it doesn't cost anything. So you know, say you've just set up a um, you know I've just seen one of your your albums. You've just set something up on Twitter, and wow, okay, oh, I'm going to follow you. If you follow me back, something simple as following me back. <gasps> Just follow me back. That's so cool. That's, uh, and that, that might be the level of the interaction. I might not even we not might even chat. But for a, for an artist to follow me that, that I, I you know I'm chatting to on, on social media or pushing stuff out to, wow, that's that's, that's pretty cool. You, you, as a fan, you feel valued. There's there's a val inherent value. There might be other things that you need to do to engage, and you might need to work that in your style. Um, someone uh, that that I, that I know has I wouldn't recommend this, but. Um, works out who he wants to go, go and engage with and slags them off about the football teams they support and has, then has long-lasting business relationships out of it, bizarrely enough, when they start talking about business. I wouldn't suggest that by any means, but it works for him. So this, this organic working out who your audience is, um, is is definite. So you have that, if you have that mystique, um, I, I say look at some of the, the other, the other um, uh, bands who have that mystique around them and see what they're doing. Um, the, I suppose the one that comes to mind, um, uh, sort of bit indie, a bit goth, um, La, La Resistance in, in New York. Um, never really interact with me. Uh, love their music, but will we'll favour or retreat something if I put something out about them. And um, they're not commenting on anything I put out or interacting, uh, which, which works well for them in particular. But if that, does that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. there are so many ways to do that. Yeah. I'm just wondering, because myself, yeah, I, I'm quite social when you meet me in, in real life, yeah. but when it comes to online presence, yeah, I don't, I don't like this. Like, hey, happy day. No, no. I, I'm keeping like quite low profile. Yeah. Um, with my music, so I'm just wondering like which ways I can utilize social media. Yeah. To keep uh, the same profile. Might have some, some suggestions in a minute as well of, of what you can do. So hopefully, one of the things I'm you're you're hearing is broadcast is a no-no. Do, do not broadcast on social media. It is not a broadcast channel where you sort of you know, put stuff out, advertising, where you, you put out posters and things like that. Hey, social media is not that. It's, it's about a relationship. And what I wanted to, to dispel the myth as well, we talk about social media success. So um, when we talk about social media success for an artist in particular, likes, nah. Number of fans, nah. Friends, nah. Followers, no. Pins, if you use, anyone use Pinterest? No, a few people. No, number of pins and repins you get, no. Number, number of views for you YouTubers out there, no. Having said that, these in themselves can, can be really good of working out, um, especially with some of the data behind all this, working out how successful you are. Um, but, Bizarre, uh, one of the things I had to, to look at uh, recently was um, a, an a NHS trust that got the rights for um, Gangnam Style music, done a really cool hand washing video. And um, they said, well, how, how successful has this video been? YouTube in particular is superb for working out who your audience is and where they've come in from and whether it's a spam bot just connecting to your page for a second or whether it's an actual someone watching it. And what we found out, out of the 100,000 views or more, um, actually, you know, a third was from South Korea. Because they picked up on the, the, the headline and thought, wow, what's, 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 what's going on with this, uh, this version of uh, Gangnam Style? Having said that, another third was from their locality, the, the, the guys with who they were trying to reach. I said, well, actually, that's not bad. You've got about you know, um, 30,000 guys there. That would be a really good, good thing for them to hit 30,000 guys with a message in their area. Connections need to be to a real audience because some of the things you can do, and I hope you won't do, I don't know if you can see this from here, how to get 10,000 Twitter followers in less than an hour, how I got 10,000 Twitter followers, how I gained 10,000 real Twitter followers. You can buy Twitter followers, you can buy them on eBay. You can buy Twitter, um, Twitter YouTube views as well. So you can really bump up your stats and say, ooh, look at me, I'm, I, I've, got, I've got six million views for this music video, I must be pretty good. I suppose the strategy for you doing that would be to, to say, well, actually, if I, if I get lots more views, it might bump up my ranking and this, that, and the other. But actually, it's not really connecting, is it? 
it's a, it's a bit hit or miss whether you actually connect with your audience in, in terms of working out where they are. And the other, the other one that I suppose drives me mad, um, here's Mr. Carter, um, Jay-Z, um, on Twitter, 210 tweets. He's got just under 3 million followers. Wow, that's huge. You see how many he's following? Zero. That's not social either. Um, that's someone who's cr had a lot of fame outside of social, that's gone on social and been swamped and is trying to handle it. Um, you will see. Social media it, it's a great tool to connect, but it's also media. You're promoting a product and I don't think you necessarily have to um, like you said, just Jay Z being on Twitter, he's connected with three million people just because he's on there. Yeah. So people think that he cares. Well he, he has yeah. a late connected with him. Yeah, just just the fact that he's on Twitter, yeah. I think people think that he cares. It's like, oh, Jay Z wants to connect with us, so he follow. He's not tweeting them or interacting, but yeah. just the fact that he's on there is a connection in itself. It, 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 it is, but I think I think the 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 fact that he's got three million people on there is is not not he's, he hasn't built those, that that following up on Twitter. That that following has found him on Twitter and connected him. So, so, so one, one, of the, one of the challenges if you as a musician, um, so is, is, is therefore Twitter may, maybe not for you? And that's, that's, that's a valid strategy as well. Because cause actually, the, one of the things that, that, that you, you will get, and you, you, if you're on Twitter, you'll, you'll, you'll see this, you'll get someone following you, and you go, oh, interesting. So if you follow them back, and then suddenly they then follow you. And you go onto their account, and they've got like 23,000 followers, and they're following 10 people, and you go, but, but who are they? And why, why, would, why would they do some, something like that? What, what you're giving, if, if you give a follow back to somebody, you're actually giving them value. It's like, wow, that's, that's, that's him. That's her. That's, she, she's connected to me. That's, that's great. Okay. Hadn't, hadn't realised that. So it does go back to your strategy there. If you don't want to be social on, on, on social media, actually may, may, maybe Twitter, something like Twitter isn't for you um, and how, how you use it. So... Um, other accounts linked to Jay Z might be his his uh, his um, company announcing tours and stuff, and, and it will have maybe you know the, the place for Jay Z's tour announcements. And I, I'm actually gonna, I'm going to follow that because I want to want to see him on tour. So having having a strategy around that is is, is equally valid. Um, but but how you connect connect with people on Twitter it is social it is social. Um, you need to sort of work that out and square square that one up. Is that? No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, 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 goes, it goes back, you know, um, if, if you, if you, if you um, saw Sean's slide, Sean would say Twitter and Facebook were superb for him and for connecting and inter interacting. DC um, says Instagram. And it's like, where, where did that, well, I wasn't expecting that. Where did that come from? But actually it's having a strategy and knowing where, where your audience is and how to connect them. I was going to say, both of them fans are from when he started in the 90s, and that site probably run by a manager, like a brother. So it's not, if, like you were saying, he's connected, but yeah. it's not in himself, it's someone yeah. else running that site for it. And as you said, them, them, them fans are from the 90s up to today. Yeah, definitely. I suppose one of, the, one of the things that social media success might be for you 
is if you're on Twitter, um, this little blue sign here, verified account. So, so actually, you're the real deal. Um, this, this, is, this is the official Twitter account for um, the artist in particular. So I talked about connections. I just want to give you a few examples. Um, we're going to have a bit of discussion uh, in a couple of minutes, but I just want to op open, open up a bit some, some ideas I've had. Um, and I've, sorry, not ideas I've had, it's things I've seen. So the, the purpose is I'm connected. Why, why am I connecting to, to people on different social media? So um, three broad areas, listening, all about creation and about marketing and stuff. So one of the things I can do, um, I'm not going to broadcast, but I, I might go on social media and just listen on what's going on, what are people talking, talking about, what have they got hashtag now playing. Um, who are my musical influences? Um, do, I, do I sound like them? Are um, there are a number of followers, say on Twitter, for example, that are following this artist or this band? Um, would they follow me? Hey, they might do, because they might be interested in the stuff I, I want to do. I want to um, push out there as well. Um, the, the bit I, I really like, though, and Sean sort of opened this up with his quote, you know, co-create, co collaborate, crowdsource, crowdfund. Um, I've, I've, produced a, I've produced a track. It's me playing guitar and me playing keyboard. It sounds superb, but it's just a video of me playing guitar or me playing keyboard. Guys, could you produce a video for it? I will, I will give you a huge reward or a free CD or a free T-shirt or a free pass to one of my gigs if, if you can come up with a, with a great uh, video to, to you know, show uh, this, this um, track in all its entirety. Um, one of the other things, you, you know, work out where your audience is from your, your demographics, from your Twitter followers, from your YouTube likes and things. So, okay, when the, you, you ask, should we play A, B or C? And to get, to get around the spammers, actually work out you know, where your data is um, behind it. So you're not going to get to say, actually, there's no fans there, so they're going to send me there or going to send me somewhere horrible because they're just haters. Um, a bit of self-indulgence. Um, dodgy casserole. Uh, Sean talked about collaborating on, on some of his favorite songs. This is probably the worst song I've been involved in, but... Um, Talking to other musicians on Twitter, um, Stu Kershaw uh, co-wrote uh, with Andy McCluskey for Atomic Kitten, also wrote lots of um, OMD um, tracks as well. Uh, one of the things that, that I did was another artist called Mim Gray um, was talking about just coming from, from back from a gig and wanting a casserole. And I went, that's not, that's not rock and roll. What's, 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 where's, where's the beer? What, what do you mean a casserole? And quickly penned out First verse, chorus, first verse, chorus, bridge, middle eight, whatever, chorus. And tweeted it to Stu. Um, had an idea in my mind what the song sounded like. He went away, got his guitar out right there and then, recorded it on old audio boo. And I went, wow, I've never thought this guy would come up with something that, that, that had that chord progression and that melody. It wasn't in my mind at all. But... It just shows the power, you know, think of um, Sean and what he's doing in terms of people he's connecting with, you know, not, not for a joke, not for a laugh, but actually for, for real purpose. Actually, there's lots of people out there who will collaborate with you, who will um, do some great stuff. Um, what happens as well, social is social. So we strike out broadcast in particular and social becomes telling, not selling. So actually, we're, we're, we're talking about things, we're describing things. One of the, the most powerful things I've seen, and it was another Sean one, um, was one of my favourite tracks, um, Stuck in a Moment, on his album. Um, I'm listening to it, and I'm thinking, what's, what's with the drums? What's with the percussion? That's, that's just bizarre. That's insane. What's going on there? Um, I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue what he's doing. And he produced um, Making the Album. Lots of people do it. Making the Album, uh, YouTube video to support the launch of the album a few months down the line. And here is the drummer hand clapping bubble wrap, banging a stool through effects and stuff. And it's like, that's so simple, but it's so clever and it sounds great. And got me engaged more in the album when to listen to it again and stuff. So there, there are various ways you can do that.
Last section, this is gonna be a real challenge for those of you who aren't doing it already. I wanna really challenge you on this. Social and free. Maybe, sorry, maybe free hugs aren't for your fans. You, that's the last thing you wanna do with them. Actually, why, 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 why wanna, hey, why wanna go and go give them a free hug? I, I, I really want to interact, I just wanna do, do my stuff and get on with it. But actually, how, how can we almost like give them a free hug through, through, through what we're doing. Um, we've seen this, this slide already, but you know, dollars, pounds. Once we get into digital, we said it's free. And one of the, I suppose, the ways of, of, of combating piracy or challenge piracy is changing our, our business model within music, what, what we give away free. Um, so I'm, I'm really refreshed when bands say, you know, the, the best thing about what I'm doing is hearing me live. You can't, you can't pirate that. You can take a, take a video and check it up on YouTube, but it's that big. Actually being there is the real deal. Um, anyone here's a noise trade? Quick show hands, noise trade. Wow, okay. Um, this is one to check out then guys, homework for tonight. Um, noise trade is stunning. Noise trade was, was founded by a guy called Derek Webb. In 2008, Derek Webb, front man of an American band called Cadman's Call. Um, Derek had the idea of how, how do I give free hugs to my fans? Um, he already had a big, big fan base from Cadman's Call, none of the stuff he'd done already. But thought, actually, maybe there, there are more artists that might want to give, give away um, free music. And the model is, is, is really, really simple. Um, and Pure, pure genius, and you can, I think you can do this with some of the other um, networks as well, but, but I, I particularly love this one. So, so here is the Hawk in Paris, the Hawk in Paris um, three-piece band, electronic, um, one guy, a guy called Dan Hessenthal, uh, front man for the Jars of Clay, very different departure from what he's done before. Um, they've had huge success on noise trades. Success in them on noise trades is something very, very different though. So here's an EP called Freaks and Outcasts. On, on, the, on the EP is their new single. So they're releasing their single Freaks on Noise Trade. Here's a whole bunch of remix tracks as well, which we really like of our stuff. And just thinking about that, remixes um, are a stunning way, if you've got the, the, the stems of your uh, materials or whatever, of getting out to a wider audience and people going, gosh, I've, I've heard that, but I haven't heard it that, that way before, you know, giving it away free. Um, promoting it, promoting through, through, through to their, their, their Twitter audience, through to um, uh, Facebook audience. They're also on Last FM. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a minute clip of Dan saying, hey, you know, thanks for um, downloading uh, this album, uh, this EP. I really hope you can get involved in our music in a number of ways. I'll come on to that in a bit. Um, what then happens is on Noise Trade, as a, as a punter, I have to type in my email address to get the um, download. I also put in a postcode. Um, I could put in a postcode from anywhere, but actually I think if these guys are giving away their music free, I will put in my proper postcode so they can work out where I am. What then happens is I get an email, I click on the download link, it downloads. What I could have done as well, I, I can tip the artist. Some people do this, not a lot of people do though, because actually the real value for the artist is what then happens. So uh, one band um, released a single on Noise Trade. This is our single. Within a day, they collected 20,000 email addresses. Think of those email addresses. These, these are connections to real people. We talked about connections to real people. Probably coming outside social, but you're still using social, where we can start telling people about stuff. Maybe even selling now, because actually we have a relationship with them. They know us. We've given them something. We can point them to merchandise. We can point them to um, live experience where we can sell our um, CDs or even go into vinyl. Vinyl's making a bit of a comeback, isn't it, I hear? One of the things that these guys have done, though, is this is it so far. This is all we've got. This is all we've got money for. What about Pledge Music? I know there's other, other ones out there as well where you can kickstart. Kickstarter is one of them, isn't it? Um, be involved in it. So noise trade, really, really powerful, has gone through the roof since 2008 in terms of the quality of artists who are giving away things free. I just wanted to ask, what's the difference between noise trade and band 
Um, not a huge amount, as far as, far as I'm aware. It's, it's just working out where your audience is. Okay. Um, what I would suggest on both, if you've got the time, is to work out um, artists like you. A big advantage for an oyster tray, because I was talking with Topspin, and they use it a lot. You can pay a small amount of money and be featured among other artists. So actually, just by buying, I don't know, for 50 pounds, you can be featured for a couple of weeks, and you can get a few thousand downloads, which is real people that download your music. So that's quite nice, and the promotions. Bandcamp, they don't do that. So I've tried that, and it was quite nice. Especially when you start and you want people. They're mainly in the US. So that's the thing. If you want like local audience here in the UK, probably it's not the right thing for you. One, to add to that as well, one of the things that Noise Trade do on a weekly basis is if you've paid into that um, you know, pot of cash for being featured, actually you get pushed out on email to the whole database. Um, so as, as, as I was arriving here tonight, I had an email from them and thought, whoa, they, these guys have just pushed something out on you. I'm going to download that when I get back um, on the train you know, tonight uh, in particular. So, so really, really powerful. Um, some of the, the, the tactics um, with Noise Trade but also with others as well. So and I've seen, seen all these work really, really well. Um, so there's people who say, do you know what? Let's, let's be realistic. Where, where we are now, in terms of um, fan base, uh, in terms of our, our, our following, in terms of our potential sales at gigs or distribution, do you know what? We might as well give the whole album away free and use it as a lost leader to collect a, a mailing list to collect a, a, um, a, a group of, of people that we want to connect with. DC Cardwell, Some Hope, Noise Trade. Um, Sean Carter, EP, Noise Trade. Really, really powerful. Um, I've seen this as well. This is, this is a really good, good um, trick as well. I'm going to put my full album out there, but it'll only be out for two weeks. You need to download it within the next two weeks. It's gone. And then you have to buy it. You have to go to iTunes or uh, wherever, um, or even my website to, to download it. Really, really good trick. Um, if you've been around a while, um, have a think about, about, about the process. What, what, how do you want to connect with people? What, you want, what do you want them to get them to do? So um, I have got a new album coming out, uh, or a new song coming out, and I'm going on tour. Wow, if I give away um, some of my back catalogue, maybe, I can start pushing out to people that, hey guys, here's my tour, here's my new album. Um, really effective way of doing it. Live album, um, Civil Wars did that brilliantly. Uh, you know, can't fault what they did there. Or even demos. Demos. Um, Joy Formidable, anybody? Anyone who's Joy Formidable? Three, three piece um, guitar based rock bands um, from North Wales doing lots and lots of gigging. Um, Released, the only reason I, I, I discovered them was they released a bunch of, uh, I think, three demos on, on Last FM at the point, that point in time um, and, and stumbled across them on, on there and been a huge, huge fan ever since. And uh, interestingly, we talked about sort of changing demographics. I was at Rough Trade um, probably about three or four years ago when they were um, uh, there um, in the store and it got right down the front. And Richie, the guitarist, was probably about there and she was looking at me daggers all the way through the gig thinking, what's a middle-aged man in a suit doing at my gig when I'm for the kids almost? That's the feeling I got, you know. So, so don't, don't, be, don't be surprised if your demographic change. And we were talking about this over coffee, about actually people who love music will love a variety of music. Then the Hawk in Paris, um, an EP or sampler. Stuff that you can give away free is almost like hugging. Yep. Uh, since there are so many people... Uh downloading material for free, your work for free. Yep. Uh, and that would include uh, getting stuff from illegal sites. Mm. Wouldn't it be better to upload merely snippets of your material, for example, a verse and a double chorus, rather than the whole song or an album? Uh, if people like the verse and the chorus, yep. especially the chorus, which is what normally sells a song, yep. then surely they can come to your gigs. Why give away the whole album to millions of people who yep. just want something for free? 
there's, there's, there's a really easy explanation. It works. That's, that's the... Sorry. Yeah. That's a really good quote. Right now, music is not the commodity anymore. That, that's, it's just, that, that's just like you said, it's a content. Yeah, it's a content. It's yeah. music. It's that's content. a really good, yeah. As a musician, if you want to get a living by making music, it's not going to happen. But you would, if by releasing music and giving it to people, you, also got, you can gain a live following. You can gain fans mm. across the world where you can go and talk. You can then release t-shirts. Yes, if you're, mm. if you're a digging band, then that's fine to give away what you want to give away. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of other people that I are making it. a fortune out of your material, calling it content, and you'll not get the but benefit even if, of it. Even if you're I'd sooner up. give away what I choose to give away, yeah. like a sample of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for example, a couple of verses, uh, or a verse and a chorus, and if they like it enough, they'll buy it. Well, if, you go to a, if you go to a supermarket uh, and you want to uh, buy a loaf of bread, they don't give you a loaf of bread. They, don't try to they might that. give you a little, or you go to a market, they might give you a little square of this, mm. that and the other for you to sample. And then if you want the whole loaf or you want the product, if it's a kind of cheese or a kind of jam, then you buy a bottle of jam. Otherwise, people shouldn't complain if they don't increase their record sales by just giving away the stuff, especially if they're not digging to make up for what they lose online. Can we take, can we take one over here? That's all I'm saying. Okay. But then that's still looking at the old model. You know what I mean? And, and that's what today's talk's been about, the model has changed. And if you've got content as a musician, and you've got to think people are buying music the way they're buying music anymore, so you've got to take that out of your mind slightly and think about a different way of doing it. There's other ways that you can monetize your music. You know, you can get sync deals, you can get, you, can, you just have to look at the way that you're going to monetize your music and think of getting people I involved. didn't say if you're yeah. not gigging. But getting, get, you don't have to, it doesn't yeah. have to be gigging. It has to be sync, you can, you can put your music on film. You, you just sort of think a bit clever. I think when you're thinking about the old model of people selling like truckloads of, of no one's selling music like they used to. Even if you look at some of the, like the Amazon people like that, to get to the top of where they're, what the, the amount of physical product or, or downloads that they sell, to get to number one is yeah. minimal in comparison to what people used to sell to get to number one. Even Rihanna, you know, that's why she's on the road all the time. Yeah. That's why she's got um, sync deals with Max, she's got clothes coming out of everywhere. You've got to think different. It's like a different world now. Okay. And, it's, one there, it's one there. About and you guys. We got forced into this way of thinking that you have to sell music. It's not you yeah. have to sell music. Get people involved in you, and they'll they'll come and you'll get you'll make. Yeah. Your I understand. Money I just way. prefer the last option, mm. giving and them samples. Know, but it's just like it's trying to see a yeah. way around it. There's a way of still doing it. It's just no. Can I bring? Can I bring someone in? I just wanted to add one thing. Number of downloads, or percentage of downloads, is diving, and, and we're all moving, or the world is moving yeah. towards streaming only. Yeah. So I'm, I'm releasing something in pretty much exactly four weeks' time, and because I'm sort of aiming it at Norway, I'm uh, I'm sticking it on Spotify and uh, we're using a couple of things where people can stream it because everybody there, almost everybody there, streams. Mm -hmm. I'm also giving them giving them away on. As, as download on SoundCloud and Bandcamp, so some people who are a bit like me might download it. Yeah. But most people will, hopefully, if they do find it, stream it. Well, there was one there. Well, no, I, okay. I was actually... Two guys at the back. Andre first. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, as you guys have said, um, I think if you're... Unfortunately, if you're going to the studio and paying money to produce your music, that's you investing in your business. Any other business, when they start, they have to put money into it before they get money out. And this is the new world in the music industry too. You have to invest in yourself. And unfortunately, that investment costs you money in order to progress and grow your business. And it's the same as every other business now. It's the same as the painful change in that respect. I totally agree with you. Uh, 